James Wilson speaking. My good man, would you be so kind as to help me? I have lost something on the train and I'm very keen on getting it back. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Buck Danny speaking. My good man, would you be so kind as Dennis Roberts. Would you be so kind as to help me? I have lost something on the train and I'm very keen on getting it back. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Can't help you. Can't help you. Can't help you. Parker? My good man, would you be so kind as to help me? I have lost something on the train and I'm very keen on getting it back. Uh, could you be more specific, sir? I started from St. Louis on the evening train bound for Chicago. We were in excellent spirits, and pleasant acquaintanceships were soon formed. The journey bade fair to be a happy one, and no individual in the party, I think, had even the vaguest presentiment of the horrors we were soon to undergo. At 11 p.m. it began to snow hard. The snow was deepening fast, and we knew, by the diminished speed of the train, that the engine was plowing through with steadily increasing difficulty. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I was aroused out of an uneasy slumber by the seizing of all motion about me. The appalling truth flashed upon me instantly. We were captives in a snowdrift. All hands to the rescue. Every man sprang to obey. One short hour sufficed to prove the utter uselessness of our efforts. We gathered about the stoves and gravely canvassed our situation. We had no provisions whatever. In this lay our chief distress. We could not freeze, for there was a good supply of wood in the tender. This was our only comfort. The discussion ended at last in accepting the disheartening decision that it would be death for any man to attempt to travel 50 miles on foot. The eternal night, it surely seemed eternal to us, wore its lagging hours away at last, and the cold grey dawn broke in the east. All day we moped about the cars, saying little, thinking much. Another lingering dreary night, and hunger. Another dawning, another day of silence, sadness, wasting hunger, hopeless watching for succor that could not come. A night of restless slumber, filled with dreams of feasting, waking is distressed with the gnawings of hunger. The fourth day came and went, and the fifth. The sixth day passed. The seventh dawned upon us as gaunt and haggard and hopeless a company of men as ever stood in the shadow of death. It must out now. Gentlemen, it cannot be delayed longer. The time is at hand. We must determine which of us shall die to furnish food for the rest. Guilt is what haunts you. What? Your best friend. How do you...
I was there. Legs lay down across my lap, just like the ocean. Lay down. Yeah.